You know, I think if you say, hey, China's leapfrogging us in AI, uh, most Americans sense that that is not good. <laughs> Even if they don't really know what AI is uh, or what them leapfrogging us would mean. I, I, you know, if you say that they're going to beat us in AI, most Americans have relatively science fiction level pictures in their head. Um, I actually had a conversation with someone about this and I said, hey, China's going to leapfrog us in AI. And then he said, yeah, they're going to be able to have robot soldiers and, uh, uh, you know, defeat us. And then I thought, well, that's not exactly what I'd be worried about, but <laughs> but it, it kind of gives like the general picture. Um, one thing I, I also say to folks is that when artificial intelligence beat the best human Go player, that was watched by more people in China than the Super Bowl here in the US. Uh, so this is a major national priority in China in a way that it is not for us. Um, I don't think you can somehow make Americans tune in to <laughs> the, the, the AI beating like the best humans at various things. Um, but most Americans I've talked to have sensed that this is something that uh, losing in would be very, very negative for us over time. All right, so one of my, my greatest compliments to you is I love the way you think um, and just the way you came up with why you thought automation was just bigger than what we saw currently. but then what will often happen is you'll say things sometimes about how uh, UBI is going to cause, uh, it'll allow people to be able to take money, pull it together and say, do fixer uppers or things like that. Well, if that's the case, then people could logically, you know, just move to rural America where housing is much more affordable currently. So do you think that that's a fair statement to say that we're going to change that behavior simply by putting money in people's hands or, and if you want to encourage that behavior, what would be your course of action to actually do that? outside of just giving them the UBI? I have a sense of the limitations of putting a thousand bucks a month into people's hands, um, where it's not going to be a magic bullet, particularly where housing is concerned. Um, I do think that people are overstating the fact that somehow landlords are gonna increase your rent by $700 if you pay <laughs> a thousand bucks a month. But it's also correct that it's not like people are infinitely mobile. Uh, one of the things that scares me right now is that interstate migration rates are at multi-decade lows. Uh, people are not moving anymore. And when you move, there are many positive things, both economically and socially. It's one reason I'm proposing an American exchange program where we send high school seniors like Kai to other parts of the country for uh, a month plus so that they get a sense as to what another way of life is in another part of the country. And so you can try and increase dynamism. Now, now this is trying to spur what people will do on their own. We also need to help people that are frankly just right now outside of the system because there are so many people uh, who are struggling with homelessness or substance abuse or mental illness where a thousand bucks a month does not help them get back on their feet in any meaningful way. What it does is it actually starts putting resources in the work, um, resources in the hands of nonprofits and agencies that are trying to do the work to help those people get off their feet. And it was uh, someone who worked in uh, homelessness services who told me the first thing we do when we find a homeless person is figured out if they're entitled to any government benefits because they're trying to find ways to pay for helping that person. So if everyone was worth a thousand bucks a month, then the number of programs, Aaron, that would help people solve these problems would all of a sudden surge because you'd have uh, actual resources uh, to reward those organizations doing the work. Awesome. All right, Aaron, that was the end of your time, but not to worry. Not to okay. worry, we now enter the bonus time segment. Well, Aaron, I'll see you later tonight too, but thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Aaron. Now we've got about five minutes for some quick follow-ups. And I think what we'll do is we'll just have one follow-up from each person in the same order that we started. Unlike the presidential debates, we're trying to al allocate relatively similar amount of time to each person. <laughs> no, take some notes there, MSNBC. At any rate. Paget, why don't you why don't you start us off with your your uh, your first your follow up question, and then we'll go to Kai and then Aaron, and then Andrew will wrap up. What does your utopia look like for the future of America? You know, we talk about how automation can be doing all of the work that humans don't really want to do, and that's kind of the point of automation, at least from my perspective. Um, do you see that as being something that is achievable and something that you think that we should work toward? Um, what does your utopia look like? 
I certainly wouldn't describe it as my utopia, honestly, Paget. Uh, I, I think we can make some very big moves that can move us forward quite quickly. Um, but there are so many struggles intrinsic to the human condition that are going to be with us uh, forever. And, you know, the goal is to try and put our energies towards those struggles um, as opposed to some of the nonsense. Like you said, like there's a lot of, uh, frankly, bullshit work that, you know, like you don't need people to be doing. Uh, you know, like when I hear people arguing against the automation of fast food jobs, I'm like, wait, what are you really arguing for? Are you think like, does like having someone just do that forever is like a better move? <laughs> like, probably be a robot cooking the fries, you know? <laughs> I mean, like, so there is, you know, one of the most interesting things about the, this campaign um, is that some people think I have a really like almost naively positive view of human nature. And then some people think I have like a really pessimistic view of human nature. <laughs> so uh, I, I think my view of human nature is uh, nuanced enough to, to, to know that uh, we're going to be fighting for uh, a functional society that I would probably frankly never like frame as a utopia. But I do think that we can get the boot off our throats really quickly if enough of us get together I do think we get the measurements right very quickly if we have the right leadership. And then uh, I, I think we can start making meaningful choices that will help make our people happier, stronger in genuine ways and, and not some of the, the ways that right now are being presented to us as what success looks like.